No one truly likes hating on a video game, no matter how much certain internet comment sections might attempt to convince you otherwise. However, we are only human after all, and sometimes a new title just makes an outright terrible first impression to the point where, for better or worse, you brace yourself to hate it once it finally comes out. And with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games you are ready to hate. Number 10, Umbrella Core. Picture this, the year is 2016. Resident Evil's most recent sixth main installment has just irritated critics and fans the world over. Resi is in a bad place, Capcom needs a win, so what do they bank on? Well, a cheap, mindless third-person shooter called Umbrella Core, of course. Understandably, reception to this game was poor from the very first trailer. Seen as nothing more than a Gears of War lookalike that passed as Resident Evil solely in its reuse of some of the series' most iconic locations. A generic tactical shooter was not what anyone wanted at the time, especially considering the similarities to fellow third-person shooter spin-off Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, which also received mixed to bad reviews a mere four years earlier. Fans wanted Resident Evil, and Resident Evil this was not. Though some reviewers did find some fun in the game's combat post-release, the hate train was far too established by that point for any of it to see any real success. And after all of these misfires, we can only thank our lucky stars, oi oi, that the series returned to form with Resident Evil 7 Biohazard a year later. Number 9, Duke Nukem Forever. What's worse than a game nobody wanted? Well, a game that people actually did want that ended up sucking. And what's even worse than that? Well, of course, a terrible game that you had to wait nearly 15 years to even play. First announced way back in 1997, Duke Nukem Forever spent a record-breaking 14 miserable years in development hell before fans saw anything of the final product in 2011. And unfortunately, it was not worth the wait. Having watched as a series of engine switches, staffing changes, and even a sale to an entirely different developer delayed the game, apprehension outweighed any excitement for the eventual release, and gamers rightly braced for the worst. Despite internal attempts to stay ahead of the curve, Duke Nukem Forever arrived inherently and ironically dated. Our fears were realised, and though the tone was more so sadness over the death of a once great IP, at least we were ready for it, we knew it was coming. The game had lost its way far too long ago, and despite best attempts to save it, it might have been better to let it fade into history as the vaporware that it had long been regarded as. Number 8, The Last of Us Part 1 when developer Naughty Dog announced in 2022 that they had been working on a remake of their iconic game The Last of Us, rebuilding it from the ground up to match the visual quality of its sequel, the gaming industry's response was generally, why? After all, the original was less than a decade old and had already received an exceptional remaster for PS4 that still held up genuinely well on next-gen consoles. People were certainly sceptical of the project, but the hate really began when the remix price tag was leaked, that of course being £70. For a game many of us had already bought twice previously, with no major deviations from the core of the original other than of course a massive facelift, fans wondered where the money was going. And all of this is a major shame because as a remake the game is incredible. The aforementioned facelift is gorgeous, and the game plays better than ever. It's a real work of care and attention, but one that was understandably soured thanks to the odd timing as well as that ridiculous price tag. Number 7, Gotham Knights. The most recently released game on this list, the anticipatory hatred for Gotham Knights remains an active sore spot for many gamers. Set after the death of Bruce Wayne's Batman, Gotham Knights follows four of Batman's protégés as they combat lawlessness and iconic villains that have since arisen in open-world Gotham. However, a combination of met reveals and outright pre-release blunders meant that expectations of the game were less than excellent. Initially expected to tie into the Batman Arkham games, it instead operates in a separate universe with none of the familiar rhythm-based combat. The game was also contentiously scrapped for previous generation consoles right in the final stretch of development, which raised concerns about optimization and playability. Thankfully, the release of Gotham Knights has proven that the game is, overall anyway, better than most expected, but the bar honestly wasn't that high. 
While an RPG style grind fest and the aforementioned issues mean the title remains polarizing, these solid characters and a genuine sense of comic book heart mean that for some fans, there is a lot of fun to be had in this fresh iteration of Gotham. Number 6. Marvel's Avengers Tragically, DC isn't the only comic studio that has faced pre-release hate for its games, and Marvel's The Avengers sadly did fulfill its own negative expectations. Following the huge success of PlayStation-exclusive Marvel's Spider-Man, another Marvel property being adapted for interactivity was highly likely, and E3 2019 debuted the first trailer for the upcoming Avengers game. Safe to say, fans were not pleased with what they saw. In an era where the MCU iterations of these characters are so familiar and iconic to the vast majority of the target audience, the decision to make the core cast kind of look like them, but not really and overall just look as bland as possible, was certainly a bold one. Immediately though, people started making We've Got the Avengers at Home memes, something that should not be happening for some of the most iconic characters of all time. Things just got worse and worse after this though. After it was revealed that the multiplayer would be a microtransaction filled grind fest with loot that wouldn't even be visible on the characters' bodies through different stylish cosmetics, which is just nuts in hindsight. That's surely gonna be the bare minimum for a loot system. Nobody just wants to watch the numbers go up. The final nail in this heavy coffin though saw the game launch with a bloated bug-filled campaign and costly live service model that fans felt more than justified the hating. Number 5. Saints Row 2022 Reboots are of course a tricky business, as developers have to carefully tread a very fine line between innovating enough to be warranted and retaining enough of the original spark that fans still enjoy it. Unfortunately, when 2022's Saints Row reboot was first teased, it was immediately obvious that they might have missed the mark. Despite the original Saints Row series being one that constantly reinvented itself over its run, turning from a Grand Theft Auto-style cars and crime game into something that literally sent its core protagonist to hell, fans immediately expressed concern over the tone of the new entry. Sure, Saints Row was wacky, but marketing made this new version's humor seem one note and corny, with protagonists that look more like 2014-era hipsters than absurd criminals. The release saw these expectations and worse come true as well, complete with dated gameplay, soulless comedy, forgettable characters, and heaps of narrative tonal dissonance. Not to mention the many technical difficulties, a multitude of bugs, and plasticky looking character models. Number 4, Mass Effect Andromeda. A prime example of the fact that a previous game in the series can have a serious impact on the expectation of its sequels, Mass Effect Andromeda was already bogged down before ever being judged on its own merit thanks to the mistakes of its predecessor. Despite being one of the industry's most loved and respected RPG series, well known for its emphasis on the impact of player choices on the narrative, Mass Effect's third game famously threw all of this out the window by implementing the exact same ending regardless of the player's final choice. And the fallout from this controversial ending triggered fan campaigns across the globe and an enormous amount of hate towards the game and its developer Bioware. As a result, when Mass Effect Andromeda was announced, many had just lost faith in the series entirely. Departures in tone, setting, and a new emphasis on exploration compared to the original series did nothing to bolster the game's reputation prior to release either. And following its launch, many felt justified in their suspicion of the spin-off, and any fans who had bought into the positive anticipation came to outright regret it. Having been handled by a separate team to the prior games, development had been mired in leadership departures, production issues, and a lack of consistent vision. This amounted to a game which, although praised for its improved combat and visuals, arguably warranted the hate it received for its story, models, and myriad bugs. Number 3. DMC Devil May Cry Another victim of the corporate urge to reboot a beloved series, DMC Devil May Cry sadly gave fans way more reasons to hate it than the redundant acronym in its title. Announced in 2010, publisher Capcom had thought to give the series a newer, more western lease on life by delegating production of a new Devil May Cry game to British developer Ninja Theory. What was maybe an okay idea on paper was immediately scuppered when a crew-cut jock was revealed as Dante's new character model. The apparent tone of the game, which appeared to be emo and cocky with coarse try-hard humour, faced even more criticism, including from the series' original creator. 
Now, at the time of launch, critics and insiders urged players to give the game at least a chance, as the world design, combat and gameplay were praised to live up to both the series' and developers' positive reputations. The release proved this to be true as well, and many gamers have discovered an affection for this high-quality parallel universe as its own separate entity in the years since. Number 2. Guardians of the Galaxy now, as we've mentioned already, Square Enix didn't get off to the best start with their Marvel partnership. The Avengers soured many on their whole approach, so when they announced Guardians of the Galaxy, many immediately wrote it off as yet another one of those, before they even locked eyes on it. Consequently, the developers were left to fight an uphill battle, reiterating that this wasn't a games-as-service multiplayer title, but rather a narrative-driven single-player game far divorced from Square's other project. Even then though, people were still confused, asking questions like why even make a Guardians game at all if the only playable character is Star-Lord. Thanks to this apprehension, the game came out and underperformed despite being genuinely solid. Guardians is an ambitious and passionate take on the source material, and while its core gunplay might just be so-so at best, the creative and colourful levels and surprisingly well-told and emotional main narrative more than make up for it. Number 1. Diablo Immortal A once-beloved action RPG series, developer Blizzard essentially murdered hopeful fan expectations for a new main, or at the very least PC-based, Diablo installment by debuting Diablo Immortal at BlizzCon 2018. Fans were furious at this presentation and the fact that the new Diablo was going to be a mobile game and industry insiders were completely bewildered by the company's bizarre gamble, with Blizzard's stock even falling by 7% in the week following this announcement. Fortunately, early demos of the game showcased enjoyable combat and solid art direction, which did start to win around fans. Unfortunately, the release of the game saw Blizzard once again shoot itself in the foot when the previously shrouded microtransaction model was bestowed on players. Fans quickly found Immortal's monetization of not just cosmetic items, but key upgrades and progression wholly offensive. And though it was confirmed that almost all of the game's content was eventually unlockable without spending a single real-world penny, the damage had already been done, and the grind itself was just way, way too long. We can only hope that the upcoming Diablo 4 might resurrect the series, but after this debacle, it's understandable that many of us are prepared to hate that game as well. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Have you ever been prepared to hate a game and only ended up loving it? Or is your instinct always right? Let me know, and while you're down there, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.